My name is Keith Wiley. I'm our service leader. I'm, my name is not Michael Daly. <laughs> Michael asked me to stand in for him today. He's traveling, and I'm I'm leading the service today. Um, Patricia Clapp is our speaker today. Welcome, Patricia. Thank Welcome you. Welcome again. You were here last week. Nice to see you again. Your <coughs> intriguing topic today is you're not upset for the reason you think you are. The cure for the common upset. I think it's a great title. We welcome everyone to our Sunday Spiritual Circle. Welcome! If you come regularly, you will find that every Sunday is different. But we are building a tradition and a regular structure uh, of ritual that we can count on, that we can have each week, that we share. <coughs> and part of that is uh, the lighting of the, the chalice. And <coughs> Lighting the, the chalice has become a symbol of uh, Unitarian Universalism around the world, and it's a symbol of light, of course, of openness, of hope, and I think of compassion and love. So just like uh, in, in Unitarian services all around the world this morning, we will light our chalice as a symbol of our shared time together. And I, and I want to um, start this morning with opening words, and then we'll have a brief time of quiet and reflection. So if you could get comfortable in, in your chair. And these opening words come from a Reverend Andrew Pakula. Come into this circle of community. I still got a tickle in my throat, pardon me. <coughs> come into this circle of community. Come into this sacred space. Come into this circle of community. Come into this sacred space. Be not tentative. Bring your whole self. Bring the joy that makes your heart sing. Bring your kindness and your compassion. Bring also your sorrow, your pain. Bring your brokenness and your disappointments. Spirit of love and mystery, help us to recognize the spark of the divine that resides within each of us. May we know the joy of wholeness. May we know the joy of being together. And now let us enter in with greater intention into the respite of this hour. Let us breathe in the calm that holds all. Let, it, let us breathe in the care that cares for us all mystery above us, below us, within us, and beyond us. Let us prepare to pause, to, lis to listen, that we may touch the wisdom of the ages with the curiosity of all things new. So I invite you to rest comfortably and close your eyes for a minute if you like, and we'll just take a moment to arrive uh, whole in this place together. you to come back to the common group together. 
And the next part of our, our weekly ritual each week is we have candles of joy and concern. It's a chance to say just a few words about something that's joyous or concerning in your life or about someone else. Um, we ask you to be brief, uh, not, not too long. And if you could just come forward here to light a candle of joy or concern and say your name, uh, just as you, uh, so we know. It's a chance for us all to get to know each other a little better. Hi, I'm Anne, and I'd like to light a candle of thanks to our speaker, Patricia, thanks, for coming today. Thank you. Hi, I'm Marcia Blondie. And um, I am lighting a candle of joy for the Slocan City Suites, which is a 12-unit uh, seniors affordable housing in Slocan City uh, in the Slocan Valley. And the joy is that all the work that people like Rita Moyer and Dale, who was electrical engineer on the job, and Eric Clough, who was the architect, and all the incredible members of that board who worked unbelievably hard, have had the opportunity to launch that initiative, and all 12 suites are currently rented, and people are moving in. <coughs> and, and this has been, I guess, a three-year project, and it is so exciting because 12 more units of affordable seniors housing in the Slocan Valley is fabulous. To help rural people, rural people continue to live their lives in rural communities is really, really important. Anybody? <coughs> My name is Meg, and I would like to I would like to light a candle for our Jewish sisters and brothers. I'm Carrie. I'd like to express a concern. I'm not quite sure how to put it succinctly, but um, about the Skynet and the surveillance state and us losing our freedom of speech, and it really concerns me. I'm Hannah. Um, my joy is that we have a grandson that just turned 21. He's a super lovely young man. But for that same young man, I recognize a need for him to have a mentor. So in the circle, we can all put that energy into him finding a mentor. What is his area? Sorry? The area in which you would like to be mentored? Okay. I got a question. Oh, okay, Peter. Oh, sorry, thanks. Then I'm going to tell you about my granddaughter again. <laughs> I guess I did it on this last Sunday, but I'd like to light a candle for the four new city councillors who are young and vibrant. Yay. How do you do this? <laughs> oh, you're very hard. Oh, figured it out. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, I'd like to light a candle. Great joy for my uh, granddaughter, uh, Elora, who's just about five weeks old now and changing fast. And uh, the, the miracle of computers, I'd like, I can see her face and talk to her and she responds. It's a, it's amazing on FaceTime. And, it, and this is, at the same time, 
This is a candle of concern for my daughter, her mother, Morgan, who's just beat tired <laughs> with her five-week-old baby, and it's hard. And I forget, you forget, eh? <laughs> Good thing. <laughs> <laughs> I'll, I'll light, if there are no more, I'll light one more candle for all those concerns and joys that we hold close to us in our hearts. <laughs> Oh, did you want to do one? <laughs> <laughs> I'm Katharina. We have to push a button. No, it's on. It's on. on. No? Yeah. yeah. I'm okay? Yeah. <laughs> I'm Katharina, and uh, I just want to give thanks for the guidance, spiritual guidance, as well as earthy guidance. Um, Patricia is our speaker today, Patricia Clapp. She's a, a practitioner of Eden Energy Medicine. And I don't know too much about it, but she said that she brings one main skill to it. Uh, and I think by way of a bio, this is all I'm going to say. Other than that, I think she's met, met my grandmother many years ago. <laughs> but um, uh, uh, Patricia taught grade one for many, many years, she said. Uh, um, until she almost lost all her two-syllable words. She, it was so long. <laughs> but um, she said that it's left her with a great talent to whoever she meets to see them as they would be as a six-year-old. So, <laughs> so um, Patricia, thanks very much for coming and speaking today. We look forward to hearing about your uh, marvelous topic. The, uh, you're not upset what you think you're upset about. It. Thank you. So, um, I was thinking this morning about how to introduce myself, and it didn't take me long to come up with, well, the question I always ask, I'll just like put it out to you, maybe some of you ask yourselves the same question, am I a late bloomer, or am I just a slow learner? <laughs> I really don't know. It's true that I taught at all levels from grade one and ended up teaching business at the University of Calgary before I moved to the cookies, where I discovered powder snow. So what can you say? We just moved. Um, the reason I sometimes, often, not sometimes, often think I'm a slow learner is that I began uh, studying metaphysics in my 30s, at, uh, which is a while ago, at the Center for Positive Living in Calgary. And, uh, that center believed in healing. I mean, religious, if you're in religious science, just we heal one another is just simply part of the belief. So that was the beginning, maybe, of an interest that I'd maybe already <clears throat> had, <clears throat> because I've studied just about every kind of natural healing I could fit in during my teaching career. Um, but still, Every once in a while we catch ourselves, even if we think we're, you know, perennial students of metaphysics, um, simply containing our thought to just the physical level. And the way I am going to demonstrate that for you today, because we will be working on a much higher level, is that I brought my PowerPoint. And uh, I was kind of hoping that Dan might not be here because he knows my level of technical talent and how I would find it a lot easier. It's not that I don't have a projector and a computer and all that junk that has wires and stuff. But it dawned on me that an ordinary piece of paper and a felt pen and maybe a little masking tape would make it a lot simpler. So that's my PowerPoint. And my theory is that most of us use PowerPoints so that we'll remember where we are in our talk, not so much to help the audience. So that's what it's for. Um, and I have to begin, I don't know, this will be jumping back and forth because the truth is my thought pattern is random abstract. And uh, you'll no doubt see that. But I wanted to start with some of the basics which I think underlie everything that I'm going to talk about and do. And so I brought a picture and I'm going to pass it around because I didn't think it was big enough. I really want you to get it. Get it. 
With it goes Donna Eden's quote, we are a lattice work of energies. And I want you to notice that that lattice work doesn't just go in our body. Our auras, can you grab this and just start it around? It includes our auras. A healthy aura is six feet. I have actually seen people appearing on stages where Donna Eden, doing the testing, had to get down off the stage to measure their aura because it was so big. And then sometimes we get clients who are so withdrawn that their aura is three inches around them. And so it can be whatever it is you have developed. But basically, that's the picture that I wanted to bring of us. I've also brought, how do we fit in? How does the whole idea of fitting in and working with our bodies, which are so wise, so much wiser than this little part up here. Um, so I brought this pyramid. It, uh, it, I stole it from, uh, borrowed it, shall I say. He allowed me to use it from uh, Dietrich Klinghart in Seattle, who for many years had the Klinghart Academy. He now calls it the Sophia Institute. He was one of the first uh, medical doctors in North America to recognize uh, Lyme disease and became famous for his treatment of Lyme disease before it was really recognized as a, it actually existed as a thing, as we say. And uh, I just checked with his work last night because I wanted to get a good quote from him. And I noticed that now he's almost specializing in autism. So um, I, I really love that. I, if you get a chance to see him, even in some of his presentations on YouTube, he's delightful, Dr. Klinghart, spelled in a good old German way. And here's his quote that I thought I would use as an excuse for my own, why, why do I keep on studying? As you can see, my hair turned gray a long time ago and I let it go because I thought I, it's a sign of bravery to me. <laughs> so Dr. Klinghart says, medical knowledge is doubling every two years. No one person can keep up. So, you know, if we have interests, we better keep up with them because it isn't just medical knowledge that's doubling every two years. I mean, the world is speeding up. So, I will come to, you're not ups or your the actual title of one of my textbooks is you're never upset for the reason you think the cure for the common upset, but I didn't want to seem over the top, so I said maybe you're not always or you're sometimes, you know. So how can I say a thing like that? Well, it goes back to the picture that's coming around. And the last time I spoke here, which was several years ago, I know I talked on eating energy medicine, and I know I taught you all the daily energy routine. And I just had to sneak back there and do part of mine before I got up because I had a busy morning. But uh, every once in a while I meet somebody who tells me, maybe they've only seen me once or twice and, and never been a client, who tells me they're still doing the daily energy routine. So the way I got interested in Donna Eden is quite down to earth. Some doctor, the, whose name is Gating Gray at this minute, began um, a study group on losing weight and keeping trim. And you know, the average woman, that's, that'll, that'll bring me in a crowd. I'll keep slim, I'll do that next time. <laughs> so I started um, working with this group, and of course we were allowed group members to talk to each other online, and I became quite friendly with a woman in Sedona who put online that her exercise program, she did Donna Eden's daily energy routine, and I thought, well, that sounds interesting. So of course I looked up Donna Eden. If you just look up energy medicine, guess who will pop up with the first 52 will be Donna Eden. She's kind of well established. And I started doing the energy routine in those days. I was getting up early every morning, so I did it every morning with her for probably six months. It's a really good thing to do. It makes you feel better in a hurry. And was painless. I didn't have to go with the cold. Then a friend wrote me to say, if you want to study with Donna Eden, the last five-day intensive she will ever be giving, because she's apparently aging, uh, will be this spring. And I looked at my schedule, and it 
just so happened I was able to fit it in, so I went. And once I met Donna Eden, my reaction was, I don't know what that woman has, but whatever it is, I'm following her. I want it. I want some of that. So, long story short. <coughs> so, the reason I'm talking about that is that in Eden Energy Medicine, we simply understand and teach and believe and work with the energies in the body. We work with nine different energy systems. And our theory is that when there's a blockage of any kind in any one of those systems, and it's based on traditional Chinese medicine and Ayurveda, and she really has studied the universe of natural healing. Um, when there's a disruption, we have an energy stoppage. Now that doesn't happen down at the physical level only. It happens way up. Dr. Klinghardt says emotional freedom technique works at the third level. Physical body, you've carried the bad idea around for a long time by the time it starts to show in your physical body. It starts in the spiritual body, isn't that interesting? And there's a level, he now teaches five levels, this one was from a few years ago. Um, that would be the intuitive level, which is where he's working now mostly with his programs. Then there's a mental level, the emotional level. And finally, it outpictures itself at the physical level. So back to a quote, you know, Albert Einstein said, we never, we can't cure a problem at the same level that caused it, so we have to kind of move up and <laughs> down and through. So emotional freedom technique assumes that there is an energy blockage somewhere in us. And statistics show that most of our energy blockages start really early in life. So that's why when I, when I started to study Eden Energy Medicine, I used to say jokingly, the only talent I have, because I don't I can't look at you and see the energies. Donna can. When she looks at you, that's what she sees, something like that. And she starts telling you what layers and what colors and what kind of stuff, which is fascinating. But um, <clears throat> we believe that energy blockages, and sometimes coming from early childhood, sometimes from before that, and they're totally subconscious. But every time your mind thinks a thought, now we're kind of dipping into brain plasticity. Every time you remember something, even if you remember a feeling, and something that happens that you see, hear, taste, smell, causes a memory in your body, it enlarges whatever that blockage was. The, and, the, and the cause is totally subconscious. We don't know. And if, ha if it happened before you acquired language, in the womb or in the first 18 months or two years of life, then you may not have language for it. We may have, may have to work totally on the emotions. And that's sort of where we go with EFT. Um, a little later on, I'll be doing a demo with someone, and I, when I, I'm going to ask you all to participate. I have done this and found it really useful for myself, participating in someone's demonstrating. Um, I will ask. What ups, what brings you here? What little, uh, what upset? I won't say what little upset, you know, everybody's upset is huge. And I don't know what they'll tell them. I'm, I'm having a fight with my neighbor. I'm not getting along with my husband. I'm afraid I'll be fired. Uh, my car is breaking down, whatever. <coughs> the key questions that I will be asking, and that's the skill of studying EFT, is how to ask the questions. The questions are, can we get clear on the feeling? Can you describe the feeling? And you don't have to be a psychologist. You just have to say, well, it feels like whatever it feels like to you. It feels like I'm choking. I don't know, it makes my tummy sore. And some people have a real problem going in to get a feeling, and that's where, where we're working on is the level of getting acquainted with your body. Because your body remembers everything that ever happened to you at some level whether you can describe it or not. And once we can work with the old memory, the childhood memory, the childhood occurrence, um, then we really start to make progress. And we can clear up amazing things. 
So the other word for it often is tapping, and I'll be teaching you this really, really, they say a three-year-old can learn this pattern in 30 seconds, so I think we'll be able to cope with it. That's it, repeatedly. So how are we using also brain plasticity? Well, we know that every time you repeat a memory, your brain changes it every time. So if you are constantly thinking, oh my God, I'm broke, oh my God, I'm broke, guess what? You'll be pretty broke because the whole, your whole being is making that bigger. And since thoughts are things, it does become bigger. Um, every spot we use is an important part, probably an end point, part, point on a meridian. So those come from traditional Chinese medicine. And every meridian is associated with an emotion. So guess what? You will be, your brain will automatically be working on the emotion you have identified that you want to work on. Kind of handy. Um, somewhere here I have Donna Eden's quote about, uh, because she and her husband, uh, David Feinstein, who's energy psychology, he's an energy psychology guru, they worked with Gary Craig, who's the founder of EFT. And she says it's the fastest way that she knows of to make changes that you choose, not changes for anybody else's, just for you. So that's why we call it the cure for the common upset, because it truly is amazing. Um, EFT has been found tremendously useful with veterans. It's used in the US for many, not just veterans, but for PTSD. Um, and many of my colleagues are being asked to speak at uh, search and rescue conventions. Uh, the Los Angeles City Police recently had a great big training on EFT. Um, anybody who works in a job where high stress is just comes part of the package. It's very useful. So why do we focus on childhood? I want to talk about a study done in the 1980s by Kaiser Permanente. Adverse childhood events. Anybody familiar with ACEs? Is this common? Is this common knowledge? Oh, goody. They're just called ACEs in the literature, but they're, they are actually adverse, adverse childhood events. So a couple of doctors working for Kaiser Permanente way back in the 1980s began to be really, really curious. Why is it that I get one patient who, in this they, they were studied, they decided to study adults over the age of 55. But after 55, people kind of, either they just fall right along, they're doing just great, or they really start to get all kinds of illnesses. Like, what is the difference? What, what is going on with these people? Why do people age so differently? So they taught Kaiser Permanente into uh, funding the study, and they studied 17,500 adults over the ages of 55. Basically, what they found is that trauma is real. And early childhood trauma is really real. So anybody who has studied ACEs or anything about the importance of those early childhood years, when you watch the TV about the parents and the children being separated and the children in the cages and all this kind of stuff. It's just like, oh my God. And it's not trivial. 67% of the people they studied had at least one adverse childhood event. Mostly we can overcome one. Um, but if you have four or more, you're three times more likely to get cancer or heart disease. You're two and a half more like, times more likely to have COPD. Two and a half times more likely to have hepatitis. And if you have six or more, your life expectancy diminishes by 20 years. So what is an ACE? And this is what we're looking for when we're working with EFT. Sometimes it'll, I can't take people right back to childhood right away. I'm not saying this is a one-shot marvel. It's not. If you have a serious problem you need to work on, it, it's a personal growth kind of thing. So adverse childhood um, experiences are, could be abuse, and that could be you got whacked around a lot, physical, or you got ignored completely, emotional, 
or somebody was emotionally, everybody was emotionally unavailable, or sexual. Could be neglect. Maybe you felt neglected. And let's say this about trauma before we go any further. Trauma is totally individual. What will give one person a trauma that lasted for their lifetime, somebody else will sail through it and not even report it as a trauma. It's quite different. Um, neglect, physical or emotional. Emotional neglect. Just... You know, I have to laugh because I think for anybody that had gray hair, we probably were grown, brought up in the days that uh, nobody fussed around about whether their children were emotionally satisfied. It was like, you do this and this and this and this, and then you do this. and So you ended up as an adult not having a clue what you actually thought, actually liked. I was in university when somebody said, well, what would you like to study? I mean, I'm good at getting A's. What the hell would you like me to study? It never even occurred to me that I might like something. <laughs> Honestly. <clears throat> or you could have grown up in a dysfunctional household where there was mental illness. Uh, somebody was in prison. Uh, you're, there was violence in the home. Substance abuse. Or even divorce could be a trauma. It often is a trauma. So... Um, I, I really like to come back to, I, I quote Einstein a lot, I really do, because he changed his mind. We all know E equals MC squared, right? Everybody knows E equals MC squared. Well, he changed his mind toward the end of his life. But of course, the power of positioning, we all have that stuck in our minds, so we think there still is matter, but Albert Einstein says, concerning matter, we've all been wrong. What we've called matter is energy. The vibration has been so lowered as to be imperceptible, or perceptible to the senses. There is no matter. That's the part I had the hardest time with in metaphysics. In other words, that chair is also energy. It's just a little slower than ours. Slowed down enough that we really notice it. So I'd like to, to, first of all, just teach you the pattern, because once I get working with my client, I'll try and remember to talk to you guys a little bit, but basically I'll be asking you to choose an upset that seems simple enough for you to work on right here in five minutes in the morning. I didn't bring any Kleenexes. You'll know if it's really emotional if you start to cry. When you, you can run to the bathroom. That's fine. That's not the least bit unusual. A client will come to me, they'll choose, and they'll say, I chose something that was really, really light because I didn't really know you and I didn't know what was going to happen. And within two minutes, they're saying, where are the Kleenexes? And I'm sorry, I forgot. Here they are. Can I, can I, I don't know how much I'm tied down here. Good, we have a communal box. There's at least ten in there of Kleenexes. So, Here's the pattern. It's not quite as simple as I made up, because first of all, we start. And I'll just tell you, I began looking at this at least 20 years ago when Gary Craig was still teaching you to do both hands. Now you can do it with one hand, and that's fine. But since I first learned it with Gary Craig, I didn't know what I was learning, and I didn't stick to it quite that much. But I, I did use it, and I did learn it this way. So I will use both hands, because I like both hands. You've got two, why not use it? So we'll start, whoops, first on the side of the hand, the karate chop point. And what we say is, even though I have this problem, and whatever it is, you will tell yourself what it is. I should say there's a value to muttering it out loud. You could mutter it quietly enough that only you can hear, or you could whisper it, or if you're really chicken, you cannot say it at all. But there's a value. Even though I have this problem, I deeply and completely accept myself. Now you stop for a minute and you think, is that true? This will do nothing for you unless it's true. The people who wrote the book, you're never upset for the reason you think, call this treatment radical self-responsibility. 
you can change anything you want, but it better be the, true. I didn't hear the last thing. I, deep, I, deeply, I deeply and completely accept myself. myself. Okay. And then you stop and think, is this true? And if it's not totally true, we back off. We find something a little lighter that'll do. It's like, even though I have this problem, I'm okay right now. Or, even though I have this problem, I know I'm a good person. Something, so you see the guts of this is, how are you treating you? That's what it really gets down to, radical self-responsibility. So we do this three times, even though I have this problem, whatever it might be, I deeply and completely accept myself. And no, I don't care if the problem is physical or mental or whatever, at any level. Even though I have this problem, I deeply and completely accept myself. And then we use reminder phrases. So let me think of my problem is that I'm a bit of a Luddite. I'll choose that one. I'm, I'm kind of an extreme Luddite, truth be known. So then we start tapping. On the, first of all, on the crown chakra, if I may use these terms. And you're just doing a, a, a phrase here to remind your brain what you're working on, Luddite. And then we move down here, inside the eyebrows, another reminder phrase. Oh, I just hate long chords. And then we go over here. I'm such a Luddite. And then under the nose. I know I could do it, but I just hate to waste time like that. Because <laughs> I'd rather learn things. These are reminder phrases. I'd rather be reading a book. When will I ever get comfortable with wires and computers and plugins and mics and stuff? I'm such a lover. That's one pass through. Your own reminder, your own truth, whatever you happen to be on at yourself about. And you can tell I don't take it very seriously, being a lover. I, I, fortunately, I know Dan. <laughs> so that's the pattern. And we'll do that. So what I do, um, there's one part I forgot, is that when I talk to, when I ask the person, what is your upset, what brings you here today, I will also ask them, if I dare, there are some cautions, I'll talk to you about them as I go through. I will ask them on a scale of 1 to 10, how serious is this? Now, if it's like 15, and then I don't need to ask any more questions, and I don't need to give them a reminder phrase. I, I'm not going to go in it right now. It's not in a level where it would be productive for us to do what I just showed you. Instead, I'm going to say, well, just tell me about it. And while you tell me about it, you tap right here between the second ring finger and the little finger. And if that hand gets sore and you're still, um, oh no, sorry, I wouldn't probably have them tell me. I would tap silently first. Because my job then, if it's really, really high, and I've had this too high for people to talk about for a while, we will, we will tap silently through while they think about their issue. It's a form of detaching them from the emotional. And why? And because. Another way of saying this, you know, if you have repetitive thoughts and they're troublesome thoughts, every time you are remembering something that's really got a lot of negative emotion, you're re-traumatizing yourself. No, you know, I don't want to help you do that. So I will judge by the signs I get, the answers I get, how the person looks. Um, are we ready to tap on the actual issue, or are we not? But for a demo, I will assume that that's something that we can tap on. OK, demo lady, would you like to come forward? Your demo lady today. And you should know that, yes, it's a setup. We know each other. Okay. We play a mean game of bridge together. <laughs> so, Karen, I almost forgot to bring my little forum. And I ran back in and got it because what I'm going to be doing 
is in every case using your words. If there's something that that's as you as you just heard too deep for words or too heavy for words, then we'll just tap silent. And it's not unusual that we might start tapping silent. Who knows? So I'm going, you're my client, and you've just arrived in my living room, and it's nice and quiet in here, and there's nobody else except us here. We're perfectly safe here. That's important. I believe you. <laughs> so um, would you like to tell me what upset we're going to work on today? I do not like being awakened in the night. Mm -hmm. I think I can't go back to sleep, and I spend a lot of time trying to go back to sleep. I need my sleep. So, um, it's a real serious upset, isn't it? I don't know how serious. How serious an upset is that to you? I need my sleep. It bothers me. Uh -huh. I have a full day the next day. And does this happen often? No. Okay, so on a scale of 1 to 10, where would you put that one? I would put it uh, really number 2 for now. You know, number two is so low that we, that we have a technique for getting you down to zero from two. Good. But we're not going to demonstrate that. Shall <laughs> so we go more serious? Oh, is there... Yeah, that's a good idea. Would you like to use this mic? I would rather she didn't. Okay. It's very difficult to pretend we're all private okay. if somebody, if my client is mic'd and she can't tap. But Anne can't hear. Do you want to move up and join us? I can't. You'll, what I'm wanting you to do is find your own upset and work on yourself as soon as we get tapping. Okay. Uh, this is just preliminary, but I'm sorry, Anne. I, she needs to feel that her um, upset can be private and everyone else needs to feel the same way. Patricia, could we move the chair closer so Anne could move closer? Sure. Absolutely. Do you want to move closer? No. So meanwhile, let's find so another. Um, so okay. Let's find another um, something that you know would be up around five or six that annoys you. Oh, I'm handling my son's leap uh, swings. Okay. I guess you can repeat your upset. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know. I could. Yeah. Anyway, just suggested. Yeah. Um, okay, so can you give me a number on that one? Uh, I'm pretty good now. I'm number five. And I'll say to you, um, because we, we do need to feel like we're in our own spaces, working with our own upsets, I can repeat it once I've heard the number. It's a number five, and it's, she's upset because her son has mood swings. So that's one that we can go to work on, and that's a level that we can work on. We'll just go through this to demonstrate, mm -hmm. shall we? So um, I'd like to, I'd like you to think about your emotion, your upset. Because somebody else is having the mood swing. What's happening to you? Oh, it probably hurts my heart. I think that's where I feel it. Right. Mm -hmm. So it's in your role as a mom. Mm -hmm. And this has been going on for a while. Mm -hmm. And is it getting easier mm -hmm. or harder? Oh, so it's I'm learning. Yeah. You're learning? Mm -hmm. Okay, so let's come up with a, with a sentence that we can use. So let me know if I've got this right. So if I were to say to you, for you, for you, even though I'm ups, even though my son's mood swings upset me, I deeply and completely accept myself. Even though that can we do that with the, is that I'm just asking if that's true enough. Does that that's sound very true? true? Okay, we've got one that's true, so we can start. Even though someone else's mood swings upset me, I deeply and completely accept myself. You choose your issue, and we start here. And you say that a lot. Even though my son's mood swings upset me, I deeply and completely, completely accept myself. And that's true for you? Yes. Good. Okay, let's do the second one. Even though my son's 
mood swings upset me. I deeply and completely accept myself. And number three, even though my son's mood swings upset me, I deeply and completely accept myself. And now we're going to go through the points, and we're going to use reminder phrases. Upsets me. Inside the eyebrows. Upsets me. In right in here, sort of third eye points. Right? On the inside, that's it. Inside. Now outside the eyebrows. And you can keep saying upsets me, and if any anything like how you're upset occurs to you, you can say you can switch it. So we'll say upsets me. Under the eyes, right on the cheekbone. Upsets me. Under the nose. Upsets me. Under the chin. And right in this little thing in the middle. Not all down here, but right, let's say under the lip. Okay, that's it. And now, collarbone, collarbone points. Down right where you started, that's a good place. Upsets me. And then under the arms. Mm -hmm. Oops, now we're going to go through that again, and I want you to say something about, like, describe the upset, describe the feelings, like it might be sadness, it might be anger, it might be something, but let's try and get some feeling words, and we'll just do it one more time. This time, I've asked my client, she's used the word upset, 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 and I don't have any of her words to add in or change, so I'm saying to her, this time, when we go through, Try and identify some emotions that you're feeling. There could be anger in there, there could be frustration, there could be sadness. But there will always be more than one emotion, and our job is to uncover them. Okay, so away we go. We can start with upset, and I want you to be more descriptive. Frustrated. Frustrated. Good. Hurt. Hurt. Remembering to remember. Remembering to remember. <laughs> Under the how to how to react. How to react. Right. Sounds like this has been a process of learning how oh, to yeah. react. Yeah. And you're getting better at how to react. <laughs> Yeah. Right. She gets so good at how to react that she forgets to remember to. <laughs> and then we And we're going to stop here. And my question to you will be, I know this is really truncated, but, you know, these people all want tea. Um, so now, just after those two rounds, tell me again, on the level of 1 to 10, when you think about your son's mood changes, where are you? Oh, okay. Okay. Down to uh, Okay, we'll stop there. Thank you very much. So I will admit that that's a very truncated little part, but that's what it looks like. And I've got an eye on the clock, so I think we've got to uh, comments, cautions. I've given you some cautions already. Questions? Yes. Um, I, throughout the 70s and 80s, late 60s, 70s and 80s, did a lot of gestalt therapy. Yes. Sorry. I, throughout the 60s, 70s and 80s, did a lot of gestalt therapy with some really fine people. Yes. Well, they, one of them. Um, and in that process, you, again, work through your body, whether it's, uh, putting the other person there, or whether it's just beating the pillow, or yes. whether it's getting that physical yeah. quality out. And at another point in my life, I worked with a, a, a psych, psychologist or a psychiatrist, I can't remember which, um, and she did the tapping thing. Yes. Um, all of which seems very similar. In, did she do the tapping on you, or she had you doing the She had tapping? me doing the tapping. Yes. On myself, yeah. 
Um, and, and I found, uh, certainly the gestalt for me was more effective, but the tapping actually had a surprising um, releasing aspect to it. So uh, it's interesting that for me, that here it is, the 2000 and teens yes. back. <laughs> it's been through so many iterations. It really has. And it cheers me to see that Dr. Klinghardt, whom I, I just admire tremendously, says that EFT is on the, at the third level. It's a, energy medicine is on the second. No, neither of them are physical. So we're moving up into dealing with higher levels within the body. But the body's intelligence is, I think the hardest job I have is trying to convince people, I say teach people, but I really am trying to convince them that your body is on your side. No matter what it's doing that you think, oh, I don't like that a bit, why is it doing that? It's giving you a message. Now, whether you're picking it up is a whole different matter. <laughs> yes? Um, can you do this on yourself? Um, and what is a book uh, to read about this technique? Uh, um, yes, you can certainly do it on yourself. By yourself, I mean. By yourself. Yeah. I'll give you a little card um, that I have with a with the simplified yeah. version, okay. and I think it'll have. Um, a Dawson Church is one of the people I studied with. There's, if you if you just simply do you use a computer at all? I, I mean, I really oh, am married yeah. to the damn thing, despite the fact that I, you know. Google it. Grown, yeah. E EFT. You don't even have to spell it out. Oh, what does EFT, EFT okay. stand for? EFT stands for Emotional Freedom Techniques. Oh. And there will be thousands of, you just find the easiest one. There's like over 5,000 research studies that Dawson Church's EFT University has done, for example. Anything else? Great. Well, tap away, and if you want help, I, I didn't think, I don't know how many brochures I brought, but my bro brochure says tap into calm, and um, I'd be very happy to lead you through a session or two or three, whatever it needs, and then you'll be fine to tap on, your, on yourself. Mm -hmm. Yes? I actually felt worse after I did all of that. I felt more sad. Well, we didn't work on you long enough. Do you want to stay after class? No, I'm, I'm sad you. Well, yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay, thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you. Um, I think we're going to have the point in our service where we're passing the basket and uh, your donations. If you want a tax receipt, it's best to put your money.